clear throat. Good evening. If you are in my part of the world, good afternoon, wherever you are in your part of the world. And good morning if you are on the far side of the world, and it may be Saturday morning or Friday morning, depending. It's good to have you here. Right. I have quite a bit on the docket tonight. We'll see how we get through with all of this. Let me clear my desk first of all and make sure I do not meet myself in the meantime. <laughs> Things happen. My mouse is a little bit <laughs> fast and speedy tonight. Ew, Fernanda Nascimento, Orchids and Succulents. Good evening to Portugal. It's good to have you here. Hey, hey. So happy to have you here. I felt a little bit, you know, désolé here, just watching and wondering, maybe this is not such a great topic. Or people never have deformed blooms, and then there's no need to know why they happen. Those are the fortunate of the kinds in the orchid hobby, I have to say. Myself and I, and my beautiful golf green hair pig as my B-roll, we have some experiences that I would like to share with you, and not all of them apply to me, but I can show some examples of why our blooms get deformed. Olivia, a big purr, purr for Olivia. <laughs> know that at any point in time, you can jump up and I'll put a link into the description and anybody watching on replay, know that this video, as you watch on replay, is a video anything you would like to add to the conversation, even in the aftermath of a live stream, put that in the comments because these live streams are interactive and also can create a part two, three, and four as we move forward because the subject of ORCID is endless. The question is, what would you like to know? or What are you interested in? Sorry, I just have to close a file here. I don't want that to keep happening. Right. Deformed blooms. Let me just go straight with the positive side of deformed blooms because not, because not everything is negative. Do you mind? I have this one program that just seems to insist I want it on. I don't. Anyway, let me just head out right out of the gate and say there is a positive, maybe more, depending what side of the fence you sit on. But Michelle, if you carino, it's good to see you. Contributor of deformed blooms for this live stream coming up during the menu of what I have prepared. Positive side of deformed blooms, in many cases, there's a lot more color to enjoy. <laughs> and if you're like me, I like to explore the weirdness of the blooms and figure out where does what go? Why is this there and not over there? All this fun stuff, although it can bring frustrations, I get that, but as we go through the different reasons of why our orchids bloom out, deformed blooms, you know, look at the beauty of what nature does and what it teaches us is that that's where I'm coming from. And hopefully, hopefully, with a few tips, pointers and help here that maybe you just need a confirmation from, your next blooming is gonna be perfect and you are going to be so pumped and proud of yourself, <laughs> like nailed it. Hey, Anita Brown, good to see you. Hands up, hands up, put your hands up. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Hope everybody has had a wonderful day or is already having a great day. Anyway, as we go through the different reasons why orchids bloom out deformed blooms, there will be a reoccurring theme when it comes to wrong culture. Not all the time, but it could be, and if I don't keep repeating this throughout, I think I've got 13 points I'd like to cover today. Doesn't mean I have to cover them today, depending on how many questions and, you know, if anybody wants to come up and join the conversation, all of it stops and then we can always split it up. Part two. But anyway, there's a reoccurring theme when it comes to culture, and hopefully that is the only thing that's going wrong. That is light, temperature, humidity, and also humidity includes insufficient water moisture absorption by the orchid. So if I were to miss out on any of these as we discuss the different influences, know that in some cases, the lack of light, inadequate temperature levels, low humidity, and insufficient access to moisture will be contributing factors to our orchids blooming deformed blooms, but those are the easy fixes, okay? So I managed to get my 
self, well, I hope organized because it always starts out really well at the beginning of the stream. And then suddenly it's like, I've, you know, I lose track and join the conversation and I'm trying to pull up a folder with pictures. And I don't know if my computer is going to let me or is going to tell me <clears throat> you're asking too much. Anywho, I don't have specific examples of images for everything I'm talking about, but I can show and represent what I'm talking about with images of orchids and blooms that I have in my collection that would show exactly the same symptoms. So we're going to say for now, goodbye to golf green hair pig. I'm going to open a window and we're going to stare at a beautiful bloom. That is the plan anyway. Hello. A beautiful bloom. Thank you. That is my loosenery blue. Okay. Now, the reason I brought this orchid up is because we're starting off with genetics. I want to get that out of the way, especially for everybody that is familiar with my channel. They've seen this orchid several times already this year. And I have determined, well, we have determined collectively, I have now come to the conclusion, which I'm going to always say, this orchid has genetic deformations. There's an issue with the DNA, etc. And I'll explain the reasons behind why this can happen to an orchid, even though we've got this per one perfect bloom and this is what they wanted to achieve. The rest of the orchid is a little bit gaga. Hey, Robbie, it's good to see you. Hi, waves and jumps up and down. Hope you're having a wonderful day. So genetics, because orchids and the whole quest to hybridize the best characteristics of an orchid to create something that has bigger blooms, more vibrant colors, vigorous structures, intensive fragrances can create confusion within the orchid's DNA. And we get all of the above, all of it. We get the bigger, we get some beautiful color, we get intense fragrances. Also, the size of the bloom is larger. We get all of that, but it can happen that the blooms are deformed as a result of too much of one good thing being pumped in over and over and over again. So sometimes we see 4N behind the name of an orchid on the label. And with that, the orchid that is 4N is more expensive than the same orchid on the table next to it without the 4N. Basically, a 4N classified orchid means that the plant is a tetraploid and has double the normal number of chromosomes than a normal plant of the same species without the 4N or a hybrid. Again, we get bigger blooms. The color is much more vibrant than compared to a normal Lucneris, and I can, I can definitely agree to that. However, yeah, and also the structures. This one is super vigorous as a grower. I mean, it's throwing out fans left, right, and center, whereas my classic Neostylus is only giving me maybe one fan per year. Now, only being relative, I'm happy it's doing that. So, but this one is doing like two or three fans a year. So they've got the vigor, they've got the bloom size, they've got the vibrance and color. And boy, does this one pack a punch when it's fragrant. Even more so on its patetico little bloom spikes that twist and turn out and only have maybe three blooms per spike, and my loose near spike has maybe 16 to 20 blooms per spike. This one is four times, I might as well use the four again, four times more intense. It's just fabulous, and it's I'm keeping it. It's been so much fun growing this orchid. While others may get frustrated, I am not the kind of person that gets frustrated when I see this, especially now that I've made peace with the situation, okay? So the genetics can play a big part in a deformed blooming. The thing is, it takes a while to understand or come to the conclusion that it is a genetic disorder. If you were to factor in what we mentioned earlier and say, well, there's too much, you know, too much light, too little light, too low temperatures, the orchid wasn't hydrated enough. All those factors could have played a part in this orchid having deformed blooms as well. However, over the course of four years, I have managed to eliminate all those factors out by systematically removing different influences and applying other influences, including starring the orchid for an entire year. No fertilizer, no seaweed, no supplements, nada but water. 
The only result was I still got some blooming, but uh, not as many spikes and maybe only one or two blooms per spike as opposed to four. I know it doesn't sound like much, but when eliminating all the influences that could be the problem, you can then slowly come to the conclusion there is a genetic order and then the decision is very very personal do you want to keep the orchid <laughs> and have a giggle with blooms like these it's like a little bit like what am i doing here <laughs> somewhat like me all huddled up this program still wants to open sorry about that let me make sure i don't keep going at it so you know for me this orchid makes me smile and that's why it's staying in my collection. So you can see all the fused things. Now, we're gonna be going back to some of these pictures. So please forgive me that I repeat my loose nearly, but it is really a classic example of how much um, deformity can happen based on different characteristics. And if another orchid hasn't bloomed out, showing the similar characteristic, my loose nearly will always be my reference bloom. So that is the genetics. There's nothing you can do about that. As I go through and forget to tell you, for example, what can you do to avoid it happening apart from the culture, troubleshooting that. If I forget something, please ask in the chat, also in the comments, but there's nothing you can do to change the genetics. Just accept it for what it is. But um, yeah, or throw the orchid away if you're not going to be wasting your time on something like that. Personally, it's not really that big a deal for me. The orchid hangs in its basket and one more basket makes absolutely no difference. And so I'm going to refer back to my loose nearies for the next point, but I'm not going to try and bore you with the same images. So I'm going to try and give you a different B-roll to look at. Let me share this and i'm sorry for the clicking of my mouse it must be very irritating if you're wearing earbuds however for the time being this is the mic i have one day i hope to be able to afford a proper mic where i can with filters cancel all this background noise out i can't do that with this one all right now here you see mutations an example of and this was a spike in 2021 when I finally, let me make sure I'm saying that correctly, 2022, yep, 2022 when I finally started to fertilize her again after her starvation year of 2021. And she bloomed all these pretty blooms, but still with a funky spike. But here are mutations, same thing. Usually it can also happen you're the only weirdo in the collection. Okay, you the weirdo over there where you are and me over here where I am because yeah, I raise my hand to that as well. Points fingers at me, weirdo. And I do like it because it, it's a great get out clause. Somebody has an issue and say, well, I'm just weird like that. <laughs> so mutations can happen also from poor merry stemming techniques not just culture okay if you culture gets corrected and this continues to happen deformed blooms can also happen from poor merry stemming techniques merry stem botanically is the growing point of a plant where the cells are dividing and have not yet differentiated themselves into leaves roots or stems the meristem tissue is found in the apex of the growing point. Contamination is the major challenge to overcome when propagating orchids via tissue culture. Do I need to put you on a loop? Can I put you on a loop? I can make the screen bigger, get me out of the way. So there we go. Now, if this, if it stops, that's because the B-roll footage has stopped and I can't put it on a loop, unfortunately. So I'm going to try and keep it interesting. But should it stop playing, nothing wrong. We are not freezing the stream. <laughs> Everything's OK. That's just the, the clip has stopped playing. OK, so contamination is one of the biggest, biggest issue with meristem tissue culture. While the orchid will grow, during, even if it is contaminated, all those little things, they will grow, they might grow slower and be more susceptible to disease. However, it will take years to conclude that the contamination in the lab resulted in deformed blooms. And by that time, the orchid is in your collection and you're stuck with it. <clears throat> 
Before we can draw that conclusion, however, we have to observe several bloom cycles and troubleshoot all the other influences we are addressing in this discussion. At the end of the day, when everything is ruled out, things going wrong in the lab could be the only reason an orchid has deformed blooms. All right, now I'm going to see what my other, what happened, did I fall into a wormhole? No, no, why, why? Oh, why, 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 why? Because I'm not muted. I see everything's okay here. So I'm hoping you don't think that you're in a wormhole. I hope that you can come out of it or tell me if there's something wrong with the stream. Okay, so we've got genetics, we've got mutations. Some of them can go hand in hand, but I decided to separate them out because the reason behind them are different even though we're talking about hybridizations and where humans interfere with mother nature and yeah mother nature knows best we just want to speed up the process and then these things happen now let me check my folder because i've got another point and let me see what we have going on here yes i thought as much okay let me bring up at least another image. And it is once again Lucneria. I told you we're going to see Lucneria a bit, but I hope to get away from that because we have a fabulous contributions from some people that have sent me emails with their blooms. So we'll get rid of that. And we will share another image of Lucneria to talk about excessive hormones, which is also a big deal when it comes to us trying to interfere with how an orchid grows. Okay. We always want to do the best for our orchids, but too much is not always a good thing. Sharon, Orchid Ninja Sharon, son, good morning, good morning. I wonder if <laughs> I have to actually send an email to Julie, son, because, <laughs> oops, I thought you had sent me an email. <laughs> and she's probably looking at you going, this woman has clearly lost her plot. And I will say, yes, I've lost the plot because <laughs> I was talking about, to you addressed her as you <laughs> oh, dear. story of my life at the moment brain freeze literally anyway so excessive hormones the important warning with seaweed extract is to only use it according to directions in the bottle and i'm so glad that fernanda is here because fernanda is doing something with oh put it into the chat please fernanda you're using a product that has no hormones, but has the same influence as regular seaweed with hormones. So oh, I was thinking of you when I wrote this. But anyway, I have a rooting product in my refrigerator, but the print is so, so small, I can't read it. So I don't know what to do with it. But I'm suspecting that it is what you're talking about. I just can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> use it smells nice though amino acids there you go all right so we use seaweed seaweed has hormones fernanda is has an alternative where she has amino acids that have exactly the same effect when it comes to when you use seaweed without the hormones okay so for me it was tempting to, to overdo the seaweed a bit in the beginning it was organic. It didn't burn the plants. And especially because of my dry climate, I thought, you know, I can use a little bit more, especially because I thought I was in a very hot climate. I thought I can do a little bit more because my orchids will grow a little bit faster. They can metabolize quicker. And boy, was I wrong. Hence why I thought these blooms were deformed. And that's when I starved my loose nearly for a year. OK, but to overdose of seaweed can put the plant into complete overdrive mode and have all sorts of surprising effects, not just with deformed blooms, but you can get insane basil cakey production, which is kind of cool <laughs> if, if that's what you want. But it is the deformed blooms we're talking about today. It can also weaken the root formations if we consider seaweed a strong growing hormone product supplement that helps in forming and branching roots too much of it <clears throat> will create weak root formations so while we love our seaweed because it promotes growth in excess it can cause deformed blooms due to the growth hormones that seaweed has in form of auxins gibberellins and cytokinins which are also naturally found within the orchid 
So if we go overboard, it's like having too many donuts, you know, and the kiddos are supposed to take a nap at four. You feed them five, ten donuts before they're supposed to take a nap. It's just not going to happen. They're going to have too much energy. They don't know where to put it. And it's just going to go all weird from there on in. Same thing with the seaweed, okay? So all these hormones are already found in the orchid. And if we go overboard, the orchid may object to the overdose by not being able to metabolize the amount. And the whole thing backfires on us. And boom, you can get deformed blooms. Once again, as a reminder, if you're just joining me in now, this is not a seaweed issue. This is genetics because all the factors, the troubleshooting I've done over the past four years have eliminated the fact that seaweed was not the problem. No overdosing here, nothing. This is genetic, but it's a deformed bloom. And it's part of the history of this orchid because I thought I was going way overboard with regards to the seaweed and had to then eliminate it and still got deformed blooms. Okay, now we have, let me just see if my folder has anything for, nope, this folder is empty. So we're gonna go back to our loose nary because pretty, and it's a newcomer in, at least in the blooming alley indoors, and it won't be around for very long, so we might as well enjoy it while we have. Anyway, the next point that could cause deformed blooms are systemic fungicides. I'm not entirely sure about insecticides, systemic insecticides, not entirely sure. But anyway, because this is an international audience, I'm not just going to be, I know, isn't she pretty? Oh, she just makes me want to, you know, think of some kind of a vanilla pie meringue thing with all the lacy icing. She makes me hungry. Um, so because it's an international audience, I'm not going to limit it to the information based on what happens in Europe, because while we cannot acquire Ben Latte in Europe anymore, or Ben Late, I used to call it Ben Latte, that includes its active ingredient, Benomil. I wanted to add that systemic fungicides can have an effect on orchid blooms being deformed, but that is not a permanent issue, thankfully. However, taking away the Ben Latte as the fungicide treatment will also result in normal blooms in the next bloom cycle. I do not have any other information on other systemic fungicides because that cause issues with blooms being deformed. And I do not have any specific cause as to why it happens. So if you're watching this on replay and you have more information as to the why, please let us know in the comments. I'd be super interested or lead me in the direction where I can go and do the research accordingly because I've been looking for this for, whew, I don't know, two years since the copper issue. I've been going down the rabbit hole of systemic fungicides to find, to see if there's something I can do. And then I came across this information. I thought, well, that doesn't affect me, but it never left my mind. So if you understand why it happens that Ben Latte or Ben Late, the active ingredient being Benomil, can affect orchids in bloom, deforming the blooms for that bloom cycle after it has been used, let me know. I'd be super interested, okay? But I, hmm, you can pretty much then say it's because of overdosing. And that would make normal sense if you say, well, then you overdosed it and then that's what happens. Again, I can't confirm that. But anyway, I thought it best to add it into our discussion today and encourage anyone that has more insight into the reason or deformed orchids just to put the information into the comments, all right? By the way, if you're watching now or on replay, can you please like the stream, also the replay, that would be awesome because we don't have that many viewers at this point in time. It'd be awesome if at least a little bit of likes here and there would encourage the algorithm to maybe find me along these lines, that'd be amazing. And here's another thing, and I mean that wholeheartedly, I hardly get to say it, in videos because I don't want to make my videos so long. Look, if you dislike my videos, that is awesome, okay? I have no problems with dislikes. I What I don't like is if I don't know why, all right? 
I am always trying to improve my delivery, hopefully also my focus, my screen capture, my content, anything and everything. And if it is misinformation I'm providing and you disagree and that's why you dislike the video or let's say the stream right now, please let me know. I am not here to, you know, bash you or come at you and say, well, blah, 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 blah. No, I cannot improve and how do I say, make things better if, if I don't get some feedback according to why a video was disliked, okay? So like the video or dislike it, but if you dislike it, let me know. If you don't want to let me know in the comments, send me an email. Every description always has my emails, all right? I appreciate that. And it's not me calling anybody out or wanting to find out. It's I'm trying to improve, all right? So I appreciate that and know, please receive it for what I'm saying it is to be, okay? Now we're going to go on to a bloom, a subject that I thought is so pretty and I don't have an issue with it, but let me make sure. Maybe, maybe this is going to open for me because we don't have that many pictures, but Michelle Fucarino, I did get your email. Why, yeah, I... I understand. I mean, I'm not the kind of person, Fernanda, to dislike a video. All right. If I if I open a video, I like it. That's it. But I understand that maybe a topic is controversial and the person doesn't understand where I'm coming from. They don't know me from Adam or they know me from Adam and think that maybe today my my tone was off, my delivery was off. Um <clears throat> And then they they might want to you know put some constructive criticism, but they're shy to put it into the comments. Then I, I understand that I get it. Somebody might say, "Yo, that sounded a little bit you know, are you okay? What's wrong with you?" Or I, you know that word offended me, or you used the word wrong. It I don't know. If you don't like it, don't watch. That's absolutely right. But you know. I, I don't want to keep bringing this up, but it is important to me. I cannot improve. I cannot understand unless you tell me. And again, not calling you out to expose yourself in the comments, but please send me an email and I'll do my best to sort it out. I would like to earn your like, you know, for example. I mean, my, <laughs> my little short with um, King has 10 dislikes. I'm <laughs> okay, whatever. Maybe, maybe I don't pronounce Venaki correctly. <laughs> I don't know. It does. It does, Sharon. I fully agree. Orchid Ninja, Chris, son in the house. It's good to see you. Absolutely. Anywho, if my computer would be so kind as to. Oh, thank you. Thank you for opening up this picture. So I'm hoping I marked everything right. Yes, me. <laughs> right, Fernanda? I was like, no, oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe not a fan of wiener dogs. Who knows? But yeah, and it's going to go up. I have a feeling. <laughs> okay. Um, right, let me get back to sharing the window. Here we go. We're going to move on to a topic that is pyloric orchids. And this is where I'm also saying I think that pyloric orchids are beautiful. Excuse me, why am I why do I keep popping up? Go away. There we go. It's so much fun dropping my box into nothingness. <laughs> I love it. It's like whoosh. <laughs> Get rid of her. Okay. So pyloric orchids, and I have to share something with you. So here's the whole plant. And she's pretty. And then if you look to the right, we're gonna get close-ups because it's amazing. If you look to the right where I've just now put the square, if you can see that, one bloom on the entire, on all the two spikes, bloomed out like this. Isn't that gorgeous? How can you not? One bloom. Thank you so, so much, Michelle, for sending me these. I was, I was so distracted that I was trying to find, I don't know if you wanted a reason, I couldn't really find a reason because I was mesmerized by this bloom and I was trying to keep my mind, like my mind on track because I'm like, I wouldn't even want to solve this problem. I would want more of them. And sure enough, you did, <laughs> you did pollinate. Isn't this a stunning bloom? 
Okay, so it's Paloric. It's got two columns. Linda Modeste. It's good to see you. Thank you for being here. Welcome. Truth of us, not everyone going to like us or things we do. And we, exactly. And that's the thing as well. If we're going to, yes, it's awesome, Michelle. And keep us updated. I wonder if the bloom has already started to collapse. I'm hoping you're successful. Yeah, and if we put ourselves out there, we're going to be bombarded with different opinions. And 99.9%, .9%, the opinions are amazing, and I love it. And I am also learning because, like I said, if I don't know this, I ask in the video, I get a whole plethora of information, which I then can Google and discover for myself. Because, you know, with Google, sometimes you don't even know if you are actually Googling the right questions in order to get the answer you want, which drives me nuts. <laughs> I'm always looking for different words. How do I formulate this in order... I don't know. Anyway, all the blooms on that spike started to shrivel, Michelle, because of the pollination. Let's go back to the big one. Because of the pollination, because you pollinated more than one bloom. <laughs> In parentheses, I went nuts pollinating. I know you get the bug, don't you? So that means, that's fantastic. That means what we spoke of as a pollutant the other day, ethylene vapor is produced by, by pollination. That is when the seed pod starts forming and that's why the blooms collapse. So successful pollination will produce ethylene gas and that's the reason the blooms collapse before the seed pod actually forms. You're welcome. <laughs> Because I've wrapped my head around this beautiful bloom. I'm thinking straight again. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, that, that, Robbie, this YouTube thing, ooh, it's, it's a maze. And I like to add to the end, I-N-G. It's amazing. Even though sometimes a little frustrating, but at the moment, it's not just a maze that you can labyrinth, you can walk through, but it's also amazing because here we are. Woohoo! Anyway, Peloric, you see, this is what I was saying right at the beginning. Oh my goodness, deformed blooms, but what beauty. For me, that is a positive thing. But anyway, let me just go into a little bit more detail, detail about Peloric, blooms, Peloria. Whenever an orchid displays a unique structure that clearly strays from the normal pattern, and I put normal in parentheses, you know, because what's normal? Maybe this is normal. Maybe the other blooms are what we, you know, we should have more of this. Maybe not two columns, but it's kind of cute. I just love it. Look at the size of that lip as well. Stop, Nina. Move, move forward. Anyway, in this case, the orchid is classified as peloric, not just the bloom, but the orchid. However, anyway, we'll get to that. Stop it, stop it. I'm getting ahead of myself. It might have three lips or the colors on the lip repeat in the two petals. It could also have three petals and no lip. Whatever the case, the orchid seems to deviate from the normal pattern of orchid structure. And Peloria usually happens for three, re three reasons. The orchid was stressed. It is genetically mutated. Again, there we are. The orchid endured environmental changes. Doesn't have to be the reason why this happens, but normally 80, 85% of the time, something happened for this to be the case. Because in this case, it's only one bloom, the rest of the orchid bloomed out normally. Okay, so why do peloric orchids form? So when the blossom is still a bud, I have to read this, sorry. When the blossom is still a bud, the lip or labellum is forming. In the early stages of development, it is just like any other petal with no difference. Only afterwards, later during its formation, the lip differentiates into the unique structure and color it normally portrays. For some reason, in peloric orchids, the genes get unaligned. <laughs> sorry. No, that's that's my fancy term. <laughs> it's the best way I can describe it. And the lips and petals take on different routes. It is a genetic mutation that creates a unique beauty because of the blooms of peloric orchids structurally stray from the norm. We consider them deformed. 
but that would not be the case if the whole spike is forming similar blooms. All right. Now, it'll be interesting to know in 12 months time or maybe 10 months time if this orchid is blooming out normally again. The orchid from Michelle normally again. That would be interesting. OK, so when we're talking about one bloom and the rest of the spike forms beautifully normally according to what the norm of the rest of the blooms is, then in the next bloom cycle, it may not happen in case there were some kind of stressors that kind of triggered the deformity. But here is my beautiful Aurora 3.0. It's also a pyloric orchid. But all the blooms have this, not just one. And I'm just, I'm, oh, the spike on this one is just, oh, the patterning on the spike. <laughs> but you see, in this case, we have a pyloric orchid. These blooms, according to this standard, would not be deformed because the entire spike blooms out with blooms like that. In the case of Michelle's blooms, they are the one is, I would say, considered deformed because the rest of the spike blooms out normally. So we have a pyloric orchid and we have a pyloric bloom. OK, I know. And she and here we are. This, as far as I'm concerned, could be a genetic mutation or I know that we're not necessarily here with regards to the genetics. I'm not saying this is a full N. But the intensity of this fragrance is mind boggling. It knocks you out. Teddy Rexif. Hey, it's good to see you. Let me just read your comment because I, I don't want to ignore him. Hi, I want to offer promotion to your channel viewers follows chatbots. OK, that's awesome. Incredibly flexible and convenient. Everything in your hand. Fan fantastic really appreciate that unfortunately um i need different promotions for my channel so if you have another product for me that i could look into then that would be awesome but that's not going to cut it for us here today i appreciate that you came in though teddy thank you so much if you, even if you're a bot or not don't care even bots get treated nice as long as you're not nasty and a dirty bot okay um yes because the other petals are jealous and want to be labellum too it's possible it's possible with all that color it's amazing this mine has one column yes if you are asking me about my aurora she only has one column but you can see that something is not quite right with the petals and even though they don't have the color of the lip, you can see it was trying to form the lip because you can see how the, excuse you, how the bit down here, can you see that square? How that one's sort of protruding? It's like they're separated. So we've got petal and it's trying to develop another lip. So, but all the blooms bloom like this. And I have to say, I wasn't very impressed with this bloom at the beginning. It was a little bit, for me, too vintage looking, too too much on the dirty side of the aesthetic color, uh, but I couldn't not have it. It's it, the fragrance is knock out. Hey, Rayanne Reese in the house. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Let me do something here. I'm going to Teddy. I'm sorry, but um, maybe we need a better product next time. Okay, appreciate you. Right, yeah, so, oh, but the fragrance. And she has got two spikes going right now. I've already lost a bud, but we'll be okay. This orchid, she smells like a Shilleriana on steroids. It's insane, absolutely insane. And that's why I'm thinking, if there was, if I knew, if I didn't know any better, I would say this is some kind of a phalaenopsis I have no ID on, but she's a 4N, she is that powerful. All righty, so we've gone through that one now. Another pretty, let me get my beautiful golf green hair pig back up. Uh, make sure, yeah, take us, take us away, golf green hair pig. Thank you so much. Now we're going to go on to another subject, another reason. And yeah, bear with me 
for all the OGs on my channel. I know that's the downside of sticking with a channel for a long time. You hear the people repeat what they say, and yet here you are still. I so appreciate you. Know that. All righty, where are we? We're going to start with that. Yeah, we can start with that. Let's do you first. You're pretty. Memories. <laughs> Might as well start singing now. Here we go. We're going to go with, let me reduce you and bring you up. I know which button now not to touch, so I don't mute myself. Okay, we're going to go with viruses. I bet every OG here on my channel knows when you see CG Roebling, you think, ha, oh, yeah, I'm just going to step away. I'll be back when she's finished yapping on about her virus orchids and orchid, uh, single, and rightly so. I do talk to bots. I appreciate that, Rayanne. I will talk to bots until the cows come home because there's only one way to stop the bots from coming in, and that is to talk them out of the room. <laughs> you see, the function here on YouTube is awesome. I put subscriber modes only on because then all the bots stay out of the chat. In Twitch, I don't have that option. So this is the first time I've seen a bot hop in on Twitch. So now I'm going to have to see what it takes. Maybe I need more followers on Twitch in order to get the option unlocked in order to block bots. But uh, yeah, that's why. Subscriber mode only on YouTube will take out the bots. And then we don't get the dirty ones coming in. Gosh, I hate them. Anywho, virus. Flowers have deformities and or color streaks or breaks. Occasionally, this can be induced culturally. And the faster way to confirm if the orchid is virus is to acquire a virus test kit or two, because sometimes even on the same orchid, it might be better to test different parts of the orchid, different parts of the tissue, because it might be the virus is in one area of the structure and not throughout. I don't know how that works. I've never done a test kit or a virus kit. I've got patients on my side. And the best, if you don't want to go along the lines of the test kit, you're going to have to try blooming your plant several times. You're going to have to eliminate all the cultural influences, as I mentioned, like humidity, temperature requirement, and enough water, in order to then assess the problem. If it persists through at least three bloomings, if all of that happens and your orchid appears looking like this at some point in time, then you know you're probably dealing with a virus, plus many other little signals and signs that you can then see on the leaves. But seeing as we're talking about deformed blooms in this presentation, yeah, you'll still get the color. Some things will still look sort of reminiscent of the beauty of what she once was, but it just all looks very weird little blotchings and everything in the back is fused together. There's no real progress. So not just color breaks, but deformities of a bloom as such that things are just either missing or fused together. Meanwhile, we're going to be also revisiting similar images like this on another point that has nothing to do with virus, but there are other reasons why this can happen and we'll be addressing that. So a virus will definitely show you a deformed bloom. There's nothing you can do about it. People say bin the orchid, torch it, get rid of it. It's a threat to the rest of the collection at the moment. I am not there yet, but my CG Roebling is getting the harshest of winter she's ever had in her life. If she thought last year was bad because it was cold and nasty here in the growth space, oh boy, she is in for a rude awakening out on the blooming alley. And she is getting temperatures right now of 5 degrees Celsius, 41 degrees Fahrenheit. And this orchid has never had that. So I'm just going to be observing what she does for the future. We'll be documenting it. The virus will also show if this happens, if your bud gets caught up like that. Then something is not quite right. But that is not just exclusive to any virus symptoms if your bud is doing that. And as I mentioned, we'll get to that point. Are you going to show me my beautiful floofy orchid again? Thank you. I'm enjoying golf green while he's around. Uh, meanwhile, it's too cold for the orchid to be fragrant, but she is a beaut. She's also featuring tonight for a reason, because we have to look at her a little bit more closer. Although while you might not think there is a deformity in this bloom, I'm going to point a few things out. And if you know them, if you can already see them, let me know in the chat ahead of time. Now, what we might consider to be 
deformities, I wouldn't necessarily say that it is a deformity. But if you're not familiar, I'm just going to very briefly touch upon flower spotting. Spots on the blooms, I'm not going to elaborate on that too much because it's not necessarily a deformity, but it definitely doesn't make for a nice picture. Okay, it goes go away, increase. <laughs> Did you see me try and pop up down the bottom right hand corner? Oh, I stopped that. <laughs> it's like playing whack-a-mole. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it, but the whack-a-mole when you boop, you know, when something pops up through a hole and you have to boop, you have to hit it every time. But that's me. <laughs> I'm playing whack-a-mole with myself. <laughs> Now, while these are beautiful blooms, you can see black spotting. That has nothing to do with a deformity. That is botrytis. It looks nasty, but the blooms themselves are structurally sound. And any other blooming subsequently, even if you were to buy this orchid, would be absolutely fine. So don't walk away from something like this thinking that there is a deformity. And so looking at something like this, you might see something chomped out in the corner up here. I don't know if I'm showing that properly with my little teeny beady mouse. That up there is not a deformity. I know everybody here is like going, what is she doing? I'm just being pedantic now. <laughs> and that is snail damage, all right? Snail damage and all sorts of weird things happening. These, these are the kinds of orchids. This is the quality of blooms that we get in my garden center. And yeah, the best thing you can do if you see this, you want the orchid, you can't get it in another way, or if the other, if it's the last one, it should be on the sales table. Get it, chop the blooms off, and the problem is solved, and then happy days for the next blooming. Okay? So insect damage does not equate deformity, it's just a nuisance when it happens. Just wanted to put that out there. Whack them. Whack them. <laughs> I'm having too much fun now that I know when, which one not to touch to mute me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still with it. I'm still with it, I promise you. So the next one, though, let's go to that folder right here and see how quickly it will open up for me. We don't need that image, so maybe it'll open up quicker. Thank you. It worked. Ooh, the cyber gremlins are on our side tonight. All right. When a bloom doesn't open or a bud has difficulty opening, then deformities will appear. Okay. Now, what a shame. These spikes take forever to cultivate. <laughs> This is the René Marquez crossed with the Rincolelia digbiana. And it's a space hog. It, you know, it's one of those orchids like, I'm glad I've got it. But yeah, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't have bought it back then, you know. But anyway, it's the first time that it is doing this for me. This is also our thumbnail bloom because it looked fabulous from the side. And when I stuck the mic to it, maybe if I click the right image, the right screen, when I stuck my little cartoon mic to it, it was like they were talking. I loved it. Okay, so we have an issue here. Uh, this can cause deformed blooming flowers appear not to open. The blooms appear to be stuck as the bud is unfolding, and that will cause deformed blooms. That could signal something is wrong with the culture, as mentioned earlier. Humidity is too low, or the orchid is not drawing enough water. All right? Usually, because this is happening now in my climate, I'm going to add to that low light levels, cold temperatures. The water is, we can eliminate the water. It's getting enough of the water but and it's getting enough humidity okay so a bud that refuses to open while everything is trying to form inside it's starting to have issues and will start to you know one thing will lead to another kind of thing let me see oh you're not in this folder okay we've got other deformed bloom folders to go through but you can clearly see that there's you know, the petals and the sepals up there, they're fused together. That is cold temperature, lack of light. All right. That's not lack of humidity. Whereas this can also be lack of humidity 
in the case that the orchid doesn't open the bloom properly. So in my case, it's cold temperatures and this is a warm to hot grower and it is not appreciating the current temperatures in my grow space, including the lack of light. So there's that. Shall we move up and just make sure that we've covered? Oh, the colors are gorgeous and they're super long lasting, a very waxy bloom that lasts a long, long time. Let me see if I can zoom in. <laughs> This one looks a little bit like something out of Jurassic Park right here. <laughs> Hello. Nom, 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 nom. So you see how in the corner here, that's the petals right here and the sepal in the back. They're all nicely snug together and tight. If I were to try and pick them apart, help them out, I'll show you in another image what I did with another bloom. It also will cause damage, so I'm just leaving it. But for the purposes of this video, I'm uh, sorry for this stream, I thought, well, also <laughs> make, a, make it positive, make something positive out of the negative. And, you know, the blooms will come off shortly, the orchid can rest. But not only that, we've got a fabulous, hello, well, why so small, why so shy? We've got this fabulous bloom from Anna Reiter. This is her Kolnigoi her Lelia or Catlia Kolnigoi. Now, it's the first time blooming, and I'm jumping ahead. That's another point why or orchid blooms will be or can be deformed. First time blooming for this orchid, and she blasted her bud, her first bud, and this would be her second bud. The bloom should have opened, but it didn't. Now, not knowing exactly all the conditions, I asked Anna if she could possibly why so shy, girl? Take the top petal sepals and try to peel them apart. Maybe they're just fused together because this could be an issue of lack of humidity during maybe a climate that is a little bit drier because of heating. So humidity being ambient humidity, not humidity being from the roots on up. Meanwhile, if, if the orchid, for example, were to be established and this would be happening and she wasn't watering her orchid. I know that she waters her orchids. Either way, established, not established, lack of humidity will do this. This is not lack of light and this is not lack of temperature. So there's a big difference based on the fusing that you saw with my deformed blooms, even though the symptoms are the same. We can see a little bit of the potential. My Kolnagoi has yet to bloom out. Ooh, but if we look at it from this angle, we would think it's a bud just opening. And look at that orange color. Do I have a pic of what it's supposed to look like? Actually, I do. I just uh, did not include it in the folder because I thought we don't need it. But absolutely, I'll show you what the Kolnagoi is supposed to look like. Let me, let me load it up. Uh, you can spray water on it, uh, Chris Sun. I would be very careful with that, though, because, again, depending on your temperature, you would then also risk the botrytis or if it's not a fungus like the black spots coming you would risk ruining the texture and the cells of the blooms i would uh, i would then recommend to supplement some kind of humidity be it a humidity tray and i know people say that they don't like humidity trays they don't work let me tell you something not using one doesn't work using one will help you know and there's a uh, there's different opinions about that and i understand that and i'm not going to you know oppose opinions based on experience i can assure you that humidity trays do work but you have to use them i mean that makes sense right sorry for this image being a bit pixelated but that's what a kolnagoi is supposed to look like and I didn't open it because it was the full bloom. Sorry about that. And my my other dig beyond, they do work. But I would not spray a bloom if with low humidity. I wouldn't. I would mist the surface of the pot as we discussed yesterday. Keep that a little bit damper. Maybe ask, uh, ask add pebbles around the base. Or if you have sphagnum moss, uh, add sphagnum moss, do anything that you can to increase the humidity around the orchid. Use neighboring orchids as well, 
to you know bring them in a little bit closer so that whatever waterings they the microclimate will then also be shared okay i always think that it's so interesting when people say humidity trays don't work and i'm like yeah if you don't use them if you don't have any they're not going to work but if you have them i can assure you from my super dry climate i can get using all my humidity trays in the summer i can get 30% humidity up to 55% humidity just by putting my humidity trays out with the floating lacquer balls. So don't tell me it doesn't work. I, I, I don't buy it. Anywho, so there's that. I'm going to show, I'm just going to keep this up. Sorry, I'm going to go off on a tangent here because I showed the Kolnagoy. And Sharon, I think maybe you might also be asking, that's the wrong folder. You might also be asking what my Digbiana crossed with René Marquez looks like properly. So let me find that really quickly. We have the time. We have the time. A ver. You are over here. Clickety click. I mean, why do mice click? It makes no sense to me. Where are you? Are you this one? Oh yes, you are. You're the, what's that? What's that song? You're the apple of my eye. Oh yes, you are. Something like that. Elders sang it. Okay. Sorry. Sorry for taking so long. I want to make sure and I get the images so that you can see what she looks like blooming normally. I bought this cross because of the Digbiana in it. I am a fanatico. Oh, okay, Sharon San, woohoo! Starting to understand the chat a little bit better. So, just a moment, Golf Green. This is what she looks like. And the reason I love this, I'm a, we've got Golf Green hair pig in the background constantly because of the floofiness. It's got Digby, Rinkolalia Digbiana as a parent. This one's got Rincolalia digbiana as a parent, even though it is like a, a taller, like a, an epidendrum, obviously. <clears throat> but you can see how the lip has taken on the shredded look. And I'm telling you, it is a thick, waxy lip. Like if you have a prosthetic, like a um, gag, you know, when you go out for a fancy dress and you have a fancy dress that has a weird lip or a weird tongue that you put on your mouth, that is the texture of this lip. Ignore the mealy bug on the right. It was dealt with after the picture was taken. <laughs> she is not fragrant. She has no fragrance of the um, Dick Biana at all. But oh my, and the blooms last forever. They also take forever to grow their spikes. That's why this year it's a bit of a disappointment. I didn't move her location. She's in the same location year in, year out. But you know, Every once in a while, we have a dud, and este año, I've got the dud. Hakuna Matata. I hope the orchid is okay. I won't know until temperatures get warmer. That's my only concern at the moment, that the orchid is not doing well, and this is the first sign of stress. I don't know. We will find out soon enough. But isn't that just gorgeous? And you can see, she, mine only ever blooms three per spike, but you can get five to six blooms per spike. But that is because my light levels are low as she starts to peter out and develop her spike. So she grows in super bright light during the summer, gets real high, deep red anthocyanin on her leaves. And then now you see is her blooming season and you would see how the leaves have greened up again. And that is because of my low light levels. Normally my leaves are this color of the canes. As you can see, you know, this part of the cane right here. That's the color of my leaves. And then, you know, three months later, this is what happens. They go green. I the, And and this, or <laughs> you see, I dealt with the mealybug. It's gone. Anyway, <laughs> this bloom just loves, loves the camera. It's gorgeous. It's a bit of a space hog. Grows very, very tall. But anyway, so yeah, that was the reason for... Showing you that bloom, I managed to interpret the information and the question. Proud of myself. So let's keep cooking with gas here. <clears throat> 
where do we get to oh we said flowers appear not to open okay fine you're welcome thank you thank you for being patient until i clicked <laughs> okay we did the flowers okay my next point would be can buds show signs of deformed blooms let me see if i got a folder for that you would think i should know by now let me just check here. I mean, I spent six hours on this today, so I should know, but you see when I go off on the tangent, no, I guess I don't. We're gonna be looking at golf green, we'll see. Flower buds become flowers, but there are abnormalities in the flowers. Aha, most of these issues are cultural and then can be corrected, but we don't normally see on a bud that there is an issue not normally especially if there's thrips if there's thrips doing their worst inside the bud there is no way we're going to find out because they're barely visible to the naked eye even when the bloom opens and they typically cause the flower to be very deformed or twisted due to the damage they're causing inside the bud while they're hiding away and we see nothing so although common on banders and fowls, apparently, I wouldn't single that out, but when I double checked about deformed blooms and thrips, they came up with banders and fowls being the most common ones. <laughs> I can assure you that my experience of 2022 tells me otherwise. They, I think thrips will go anywhere at any time and they won't just be on buds. And the time of year is not relevant either. Whatever it is, if it's warm and it's humans, these cretins will be all over it. The only thing that you can see when thrips are present, and if you've got an orchid in bud, is if the damage is already showing on the leaves. Otherwise, you will be none the wiser. And thrips damage will look similar to something that I've got, but not quite. So, um, you know, stretch the imagination a little bit. Let me show you why not, because it, there, there is something that kind of gives it away on my Lucneries Blue. I know, boring, sorry, but, you know, it's an image that I find important for this topic. If um, Golf Green wouldn't hog the screen, much as I love it. Okay, now, none of this is thrips, okay? You can see the iron damage from the hanger, blah -de blah But if you look at the back here, all right, you can see... Maybe I should zoom in a little bit more. You can see like a trace of something nasty going on, okay? Now this could be some form of insect damage that I didn't see or the, uh, the bloom was outside and something chomped along it. But thrips will leave marks like streaks. In this case, these streaks are already quite deep and too obvious. Slivers is what I would call it if you're looking for thrips damage. They can, while they can appear on buds, like I said, <laughs> thrips like it very, very dark. And inside the bud, when everything is closed, although there's a little bit of ambient light around it, there might be a glow, it's darker in the bud than outside. So that's where they're going to be hiding and it's going to be very, very difficult to detect them until the bloom doesn't open. While we're at it, why not? Let me go here just because she pretty she's not normal looking but she pretty we at least get a glimpse of my sophronitis coccinia we kind of can have a look and see also insect damage but i'll tell you that this is not insect damage it is cold damage but while the bud was forming and this is why i was advising something to anna right if she was going to try and peel open the bud you can see that my little coccinia is, looks like it's been chomped. You can see it here on the corner. Am I showing it? Yep. You can see it here on the corner. You can see it down here on the sepal. And you can see it here. And for the longest time, I was watching this bud, and I'm like, what are you doing? And <clears throat> I helped it. The tips were, the tip of the bud was already going brown a couple of days into the bud forming. So I thought, yeah, that could be cold. It got a little bit nippy in its place there, and acceptable. Or it could be because this is a first time bloomer that I can tell, I can't see any other residual spikes on this orchid. 
So I was, I was actually thinking this bud would blast, let it get a little bit bigger, and then I peeled open things. So something wasn't quite right here, and I'm not going to say that it's thrips, but this is what you might see inside if you have thrips damage, and you will see it mainly around the column and the lips. It'll be a little bit of a crunchy brown, little bit of slivers all along that place. It's nasty. It's horrible. You're all excited, your bud opens, and then it's like, uh. <laughs> so I was also in doubt about this coccinia. I thought, are you a coccinia? Because the bloom is absolutely tiny. And I don't remember my previous coccinia being that tiny, but I had another Google, and I'm pretty sure I've got a coccinia. We'll just have to wait and see for the next bud or bloom to open and to make a clear distinction. Oh, but she is beautiful. That orange is just astounding. More on the red side, the, the camera is picking up the orange as the more favorable and predominant color, but it is more of a red. Thrips decimated my Japanese maples last summer. Oh, oh, Sharon, I'm sorry. And, oh my goodness, okay. I guess there's nothing. Oh, the horror. I wonder if anything jumped onto your collection because that would be that's my, my my immediate next thought was did anything transfer into anything of your other plants? Because they're, they're not picky. They'll just take anything. Why is the two of us down here? Boink. <laughs> OK, so I hope that it doesn't decimate your there are coccinias of different colors, yes. And I was hoping that maybe I would get, you know, by freak of nature, I'd get the yellow one. But, okay, well, that's great. So you have a Japanese maple that is the host plant. Eh, I guess that's the positive and among the negative there. Mm, not nice, though. You know, sometimes you can put um, artichokes into your garden and no aphids will attach to anything else. They'll all zoom in on the artichoke sometimes. Not that I like to make a Japanese maple a host plant for thrips, to be honest with you, but uh, I would like to say then that's a positive thing and nothing else jumped anywhere. Yeah, <clears throat> there are coccinia different colors and I did go to the Google just to make sure because I didn't even remember how the petals were so separate from the bottom. I haven't even compared my older pictures. I've been so busy that I haven't actually compared my older picture. I just don't remember the bottom sepals being so triangular away from the upper petals. But she's gorgeous. She bloomed. She was, huh, I didn't think she would make it at all, ever, when I got her out of the box. So, yeah. Okay. Now, let me just check and see if I haven't jumped the gun with this one. But seeing as we were on the subject of thrips, cold shock would be the next one. This can cause the flower edges to be translucent or brown. And that is why we have golf green hair pig in the viewfinder. I'm not going to spoil the bloom. But I do want to point out if there's somebody that says, well, the bloom doesn't look deformed to me. There, It is not deformed per se. But there are issues in this bloom if I can just pause it. Can I pause you? Maybe I can reverse the clip a little bit because it was right there. And although I do love the tissue texture, love me the tissue texture. If you look on the bottom right, now I'm on the streaming software. So if I highlight that image, I don't know if I'm going to do some make a mistake. Bottom right corner of the image, you can see how it's the, the veins and of the petal there. It's translucent. Well, the orchid in herself also has a translucent tissuey kind of structure characteristic to it. It shouldn't be like this. And it should not be like this so soon after the bloom's opening. Let me see if I can find another angle. Let's go back if that wasn't clear enough. And another thing, this is not deformed, but know that if you, hello, why, why is the, it wants me to go in that way. No, you don't. You go this way. I'm, tell, I'm calling the shots here. We're having an argument, the software and I. Now, while it is not deformed, but you can see how the petal is curling down like that over here. It's not standing upright and proud. That is not a deformity. That is cold. So... 
not everything is deformed, okay? We just need to make sure that we see and understand and diagnose what's going on based on our environment and also understanding the what the orchid should look like. Did I even put a picture of what she should look like into the folder? A ver, a ver, a ver. I've just got pretty frilly pictures because I'm just so mesmerized by the frilly pictures. <clears throat> the one thing that is also not happening at this point in time has nothing to do with deformity, and that is the curl, the lip isn't unfolding properly. It's too cold. It's gonna stay all rustled up and bunched up. So let me show you this image because now with an image we can see a picture a little bit more clearly instead of me showing you. Yeah, do you mind? There we go. And you see the right petal here? You can see how you, it's pr pretty much see-through right there, translucent. Oh, but my goodness. My goodness. Then now here we have also a little bit of cold damage just here. Not deformed. The lip should uncurl. All this should be a little bit more spaced out, creating a path up into the throat but it won't because of the cold. The bloom is not deformed. Visually, yes, but structurally sound, if that makes sense, okay? So there's a difference. The roses, okay, you've got an aphid magnet on the neighbor's side, that is perfect. Deformed blooms on the golf green, no more floof. That's, <laughs> oh, equals more floof. Yes, it does. Oh, it just just looked like a dessert, doesn't it? Now, another thing about cold is, let me just show you. Let me show you. Let me not lose track here. Cold shock. What we saw before, where am I? Okay. What we saw before is a bud that can't come out of its sheath by cold shock, even though... Remember before we, when we looked at this, it was about when we discussed a virus. In this case, it's temperature based. The orchid is absolutely fine, even though she's not. But let's just say, hypothetically, your orchid is absolutely fine. And this is happening, okay? So even though everything is progressing normally, sheath is fattening up and it, the orchid is starting, the bud is starting to come, the bloom is starting to come through the sheath. If there's a temperature drop, cold shock, Whatever is going on in there that cannot release is going to start developing. And that is when we could see and also get the result of the fusing of certain structures that cannot form out. Normally, your lip will always be okay in your deformed blooms. It'll be all the other structures that are going to have issues because they are forming down here where it's tight. All right. So if there's a temperature drop in your environment, or you haven't got enough light for the orchid to be able to continue to metabolize and do what she's doing, as in pushing out a bloom, the problem is gonna be your structures, your periphery structures, petals and sepals. Your lip will normally be beautiful and fine because that is the first thing that can actually come out, okay? So there's always hope when it comes to analyzing what an orchid is doing, what a bloom is doing when it comes to cold. At least you know if it's that part of the culture, it's easy eliminated and your subsequent blooming is going to be just fine. Now, in this case, it wasn't, but that's not what we're here to talk about, okay? Uh, let me make me sure that I have everything here. <clears throat> Cold shock. Okay, we've done that. Okay, another thing is, oh, let's go back to golf green while we talk about juvenile blooms. Of green pretty. Let me call, close out this and put you back on play. You can move again. All right, so when we talk about juvenile orchids, first time bloomers earlier on briefly referenced, they can present weird structures, pale colors if the blooms have color, and even though not a deformity, but a fragrant orchid may not have a fragrant on its first blooming. So the reason for this is maybe obvious, maybe not so much. That was not me, that was my dog shaking himself and his ears make that noise in case the microphone picked that up and it sounded odd, okay? I have a dog with very floppy ears. When he shakes himself, they make that noise. <laughs> Just in 
case. <laughs> okay. So the orchid, of course, being young, has issues sometimes with first time blooming. The colors won't be as vibrant, should not be considered a deformity. And the best thing to do there is be patient about it, even if the structures are fused together, if nothing else was in the way with regards to the culture, when we talk about humidity, water, there's roots in the pot, etc. Now fertilizer, don't worry if, fuse, if structures are fused together, that is probably a first time blooming woe. And then of course, people will also say a deformed bloom could be that it is small. <laughs> Yes, Fernanda. <clears throat> yes, thank you. <laughs> but the bloom considered small in size could also be considered a deformity. When it comes to this age of your orchid, do not take that as a negative. That's all part and parcel of the orchid actually maturing. Bloom count. We're going to keep the, I think we're on point number 13 now or 14. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But this is the last point. So gather up your questions or ask for a link if you want to come up. I don't mind either way. But this is my last point when we come to bloom count. If the orchid is not getting enough of everything it needs while it is forming blooms, light temperature, moisture, and nutrients, but has multiple blooms on a spike, it could cause a crowded look of the blooms and they cannot open properly and that is also what is happening with my golf green for the first time i've got two blooms on a spike which is yay but because the conditions while the orchid was forming what is wrong with me words are hard tonight again while the blooms and buds were forming out the light levels had dropped considerably i couldn't fertilize as much as i would normally do throughout the progression of buds developing because of the conditions, but I prefer to forfeit a spectacular blooming the way I would like to see it for the health of the orchid. Meanwhile, the fact that she even bloomed is a part, it's like a miracle. So know that if you've got this happening, more floof, deformed blooms, as Sharon Sun said, more floof, it's a gorgeous spectacle. It is not a deformity. It is just the fact that the culture was wrong in this case, and you can see how there was not enough juice to get those peduncles pushing out so that the orchids could spread, the blooms could spread and separate away from each other the way they should. That is also what could be mistaken as a deformity, but that is more of a cultural thing, fertilizer and light thing, as opposed to anything else. There's nothing wrong with this orchids. Fingers crossed that I can say that this time next year as well. Oh my goodness, she just, she reminds me of Swiss buttercream that is on top of some kind of a, a beautiful gâteau. <laughs> There's one more thing I wanted to show you though in this context. I just wanted to see if I haven't forgotten that because sometimes I do that. It's such a shame. I don't want to miss anybody's images that they've sent me. That would be awful as well, even though I think I've prepared for this live stream. You never know. And then I'm, yeah, we've done bloom count. Yeah. Oh, by the way, yeah, I'm going to show you this. I am going to show you this. Hang on a second. We're going to back to another point. But because Sharon's son liked this so much, I'm going to show you my Yokosuka story because she has exactly the same colors as the Renan, the Rene Marquez with a Digbiana cross. Exactly the same colors, bigger blooms, no fragrance, but here we have also a signal of cold shock or conditions not being quite right for her to open her blooms beautifully. But these blooms are gorgeous, also very waxy very stout very firm but you can see on the top right bloom here we have issues so as the bud was forming the light tempered the light dropped the temperatures dropped even though she's up against the glass during the day it's a little bit more warm <laughs> glass at night gets quite cold but i can't move her i don't know where to put her otherwise maybe for next year i'm going to have to rearrange what i think is top shelf and what should be elsewhere we'll have to wait and see but you see, this is cold shock as well. But I just thought 
She normally blooms reliably, perfectly. And last year I had two leads. This year only one lead uh, bloomed out. But you can also see down here we have a deformed looking column that is also lack of light and cold shock as they were forming. And you can also see in the petal right here we have some damage as the formation was. It couldn't uncur as it was developing, the cells couldn't form properly as much as they did here on the other side. This is also due to cold, depending on how the bud was facing the cold window pane. Not touching, my, they don't touch, neither the leaves, nothing touches the windows, but it's enough that residue cold coming through. So that is cold damage as well. And then here we have this funky thing going on as well. That is due to lack of light, not due to lack of humidity, but lack of light. There isn't enough temperature, there isn't enough warmth to be able to develop things properly. So all in all, my Yokosuka story only has one perfect bloom. And I didn't take a picture of it for this presentation because we're talking about deformed blooms and the one down here is beautiful. The reliable orchid, <clears throat> I know, the blooms are amazing. For me, huh, in my little blooming alley at the moment, it's a pop of color. I'm grateful that they made it. I could take the pictures. The spike is, is gonna be cut off tomorrow, but there you go. I am, I am cutting blooms off like it's going out of style. It's like it's the nouveau thing to do. Oh, my orchid is blooming, chop. <laughs> Meanwhile, squeeze in a dedication, but then it's like chop. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I, I just hope that they'll come through. That's all. That's all I ask. So that would be it with regards to deformed blooms, unless you would like to add to the conversation, be it right now with a link. If that is what you would like to do, be very happy to have you up here for a few. Or if you would like to add to the conversation in the comments, that would be amazing for everybody that's going to revisit this. Well, I hope that there will be people revisiting this. And if not, well, it was wonderful. Your wish list is getting bigger. Yeah. You know what, Chris Sun, if you were in my territory, I would be sending you divisions left, right, and center, and possibly orchids that I know will do We'll be so grateful to be in a proper, proper setting. I would actually reach out to the Orchid Ninjas and say, hello, this and this and this needs a new home. It needs this and this during the winter. I can't provide it. So, you know, anybody open for adoption? <clears throat> That's what I would do. Unfortunately, we are so far away. Thank you very much, Michelle and Michelle. Thank you so, so much for the contribution to your images. Please keep me us updated with regards to how the things are progressing with your pollination. And hopefully in five or six, well, maybe seven years, we, the golf, no, actually it doesn't, Robbie. Digbiana lasts longer for me than the golf green does. And unfortunately the Digbiana Mine has two buds pushing right now. I'm not, that's not unfortunate. I'm really, really happy. But I've always wanted them to bloom together, and it seems like they're just a little bit out of sync. Last year, I squeezed it in sort of, kind of. <laughs> but I think the, the, the golf green was already very tired by that time. I'm not even going to wait for that to happen this year. But, uh, yeah, no, no, no. The Digbiana lasts much longer for a species orchid. It's remarkable, just gorgeous. And I think she's gonna be fragrant even though the temperatures are not gonna be right. She's just one of those giving species orchids. And Michelle, yeah, please, please keep us updated on how things are going. Maybe in seven years, we're gonna see something pyloric, maybe not, but at least we're gonna see some beautiful, beautiful no ID phalaenopsis that you have there. Love that color so, so much. Anyway, thank you everybody for coming. I appreciated having you here. Lisette, coming in clutch right at the end. Hello. It's good to see you. At least I could say hi. <laughs> hi, Lisette. Thank you so, so much for being here. 
don't be shy next time unless of course you're busy i understand that you don't need to be tapping away but coming in clutch fantastic at least i can say hi to you all righty have a beautiful saturday sharon sun and the rest of your friday to all of you on the west side of the pond and well good good evening good night fernanda there in portugal the only thing I do ask from you is that you stay safe. You guys take care. Bye.